Cooters, a name that ignites intrigue and stirs the pot of controversy, is undoubtedly a household brand. This iconic American chain has carved its place in pop culture history. When you hear the word Hooters, vivid images of servers donning the trademark orange shorts and white tees come to mind, with an owl named Hootie presiding over it all. It's not just a restaurant, it's an experience, a symbol, and a cultural phenomenon that has captured the imagination of millions. The story of Hooters is a tale of chicken wings, camaraderie, and entrepreneurial spirit. Since its inception, it has become more than just a place to savor hot wings. It's a brand synonymous with a unique atmosphere that people either love or love to scrutinize. The controversies, the charisma, and the legacy of Hooters make it a subject of fascination and discussion, making it a significant chapter in the rich tapestry of American dining culture. Picture this, it's 1983 in Clearwater, Florida, and six friends decide to dive headfirst into the world of business. These folks had business experience, sure, but they knew zilch about running a restaurant. It's the classic story of friends taking the leap and making it work. It was a building that felt cursed. Have you ever seen one of those in your area? One where businesses kept changing like they were playing musical chairs? Well, that's where they decided to open the first ever Hooters. Their first day in business was nothing short of a train wreck. Frying the chicken wings seemed harder than a Rubik's Cube. They were still waiting for their beer license, it was their marketing wizardry. From day one, they had tongs wagging about Hooters, leaving an indelible mark in the minds of the public. And let's be honest, it all starts with that unforgettable name. Hooters isn't just a casual moniker. It's a catchy, playful, and provocative term that commands attention. The playful owl in their logo might claim to represent the hoot sound, but we all know it's a clever nod to the real stars of the show. Those legendary Hooters girls. Hooters knew how to make a statement. They weren't afraid to think outside the box. Their marketing stunts were bold, often teetering on the edge of audacious. Remember the time they sent someone parading through the streets in a rented chicken suit, clucking up a storm? It might have seemed a little desperate, but it worked. Then, there was that daring soul who ventured into the water, armed with orange spray paint, to mark the word Hooters on a partially submerged boat, visible from the street. These antics not only grabbed attention, but also revealed their unorthodox approach to branding. It was these out-of-the-box maneuvers that set Hooters on a path to notoriety and established them as a restaurant chain like no other. Their marketing stunts were something else. First, they rented a chicken suit and sent a guy clucking through the streets. Desperate? Maybe. Effective? Definitely. And then, they had one daring soul swim out into the water with orange spray paint to tag a half-sunk boat with the word Hooters. Local news got a kick out of it, and the Hooters' name spread like wildfire. In 1984, their big break came. During the Super Bowl between the Raiders and the Redskins, John Riggins, the star player of the Washington Redskins, not only ate at Hooters but brought his whole team there after the game. News outlets caught wind of it, and suddenly, Hooters was front-page news. Their sales doubled, and they were on their way they didn't stop there. Hooters of America, created by a group of investors from Atlanta, took the plunge and expanded the franchise. The early 90s brought the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission knocking. Why? Hooters only hired women for the coveted server positions. You could argue it's discrimination, and you wouldn't be wrong. But here's the rub. That's kind of the whole point, right? People go to Hooters for the whole Hooters girl experience. It's a touchy subject, and Hooters defended itself in its own unique way. Ever heard of Vince, the mustachioed character who rocked the Hooters girl uniform? Yeah, they spent millions on ads, billboards, and radio commercials to show just how ridiculous it would be if they had to hire men for the job. It culminated in a march on Washington, where Hooters girls carried humorous signs to protest the protest. A big shout out to all you money maestros for tuning in 
and becoming part of our fantastic financial family. You're the real deal, and we're thrilled to have you on board. Now back to the video. There were more lawsuits in the following years, alleging gender discrimination. The big one was a class action lawsuit in 1997, which was settled out of court for $3.7 million. But the controversies didn't end there. Racial discrimination reared its ugly head, like in 2015, when a black woman in Baltimore was told she couldn't have blonde highlights in her hair. She was ultimately fired over it and awarded $250,000. As recently as 2023, a North Carolina location faced a lawsuit for alleged discrimination against black women during the rehiring process post-pandemic. And then there's the thorny issue of sexual harassment and assault allegations. In a 1993 lawsuit that was settled out of court, three women from the Mall of America location in Minnesota claimed they'd been inappropriately touched and verbally abused by male co-workers. The year 2000 saw a woman testify that her managers tried to coerce her into going home with them, even making threats. It was over the top, to say the least. He had the women engage in a no-hands-bean-eating contest to decide who could leave work first. That might be an extreme case, but it's a stark reminder of the uncomfortable stories that have come out of Hooters over the years. But Hooters has stood the test of time. Despite all the controversies, they'll celebrate their 40th anniversary in 2023. Even in the early 2010s, they faced a slump as competitors snatched away their market share. But they pivoted, remodeling restaurants and offering healthier menu options. They also ventured into the world of delivery, understanding that not everyone wanted to step foot in their restaurants. And hey, they even started a spin-off called Hootswings, where the atmosphere is less Hooters and more traditional. The big question remains, do people come to Hooters for the food, the experience, or both? In an age where takeout and dining at home are on the rise, it's an intriguing puzzle for Hooters to solve. So, what's your take on Hooters? Are you a dedicated customer who enjoys the concept and the unique atmosphere? Or do you believe the world would be better off if Hooters packed up and called it a day? Chances are, you're somewhere in between, and there's room for healthy discussions. Which of these controversies strikes a chord with you, and what steps should Hooters take to win your approval? Before we wrap up, I want to acknowledge that we've touched on some sensitive issues here. It's a challenge to navigate these topics with care, but we've done our best to provide a balanced perspective. Now it's your turn. Share your thoughts on Hooters and the controversies surrounding it in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going. Cheers for hanging out with us today. If you enjoyed the ride, show us some love with a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button for more money magic. Don't be shy. Share this video with your fellow money mavens. Until next time, keep those financial dreams alive.